So this is part two of the cardiovascular system. I will just make sure that you have um, read and looked at the cardiovascular system. Also, you will see that there are videos on how the circulatory system works and how it actually goes through the body. We will talk about that also on a different video. You'll see that form of me that I made a couple years ago. So the first disease process we're going to look at is hypertension and hypertension of course is high or abnor abnormally high blood pressure a systolic of over 140 so as we talked about earlier that is the pressure when the heart is beating and the diastolic is 90 so looking at the diastolic pressure is anything above 90 so that is when your heart is at rest it is considered the silent killer and often has no signs and symptoms um, maybe a headache but other than that um, usually there's no signs and symptoms of high blood pressure and it's usually taken when you just randomly take your blood pressure or you um, go for a doctor's appointment I often in class will find one or two people a year with high blood pressure and I send them directly to their doctor after we've taken a few times because it's not just one time having high blood pressure or when you're running or doing something like that it is consistently having high blood pressure even at risk at rest sorry it is a narrowing of the blood vessels and often other medical conditions can have that such as kidney head injury pregnancy or tumors those could be your that's why we have high blood pressure risk factors are over the age of 35 ethnicity a family history obesity diabetes stress constricts the blood vessels and causes us to that sympathetic nervous system overactivates and gives us that adrenaline alcohol and smoking are risk factors with heart disease and all cardiovascular disease processes are all the same um, signs and symptoms when you do have high blood pressure it will involve other organs the blood vessels breaking in the back of our eyes can cause um, blindness kidneys can cause kidney failure brain it can cause a stroke and also can even have a heart attack therefore signs and symptoms they are these you need to have two or more occasions of the reading and it may not have any symptoms as first as I said but later you may have headache dizziness blurred vision for high blood pressure coronary artery disease or what we call CAD coronary artery disease can cause hypertension but really what it is as you can see in this picture here it's the buildup of plaque in the artery walls of course it does in the all vessels so it's building up that coronary artery disease they say heart disease and head disease or brain disease really go hand in hand so you need to have a good diet causes and risk factors of course are blocking or narrowing of the coronary arteries or atherosclerosis also called arteriosclerosis or coronary artery disease it is really the buildup in all arteries not only the coronary arteries also could be the carotid could be any of the arteries that we have in our body also when we often see a correlation between heart health and um, brain health so remember when you're looking at a stroke the clotting up of those arteries and a blood getting clot getting caught in there excuse me could be caused by arterial sclerosis or atherosclerosis but we're looking at it more in the heart right now and it blocks the flow or slows the or blocks it so we have a decreased oxygen and nutrients to the heart muscle and we can end up with what we call angina pectoris or chest pain or even later on we'll look at what a heart attack is so it's a building and clogging up of those arteries if you're looking at the risk factors for coronary artery disease or CAD you will see on 836 hypertension increased blood cholesterol level lack of exercise smoking alcohol increased stress um, diabetes age sex have a men have a Slight, uh, slight higher risk and family history so some of these things we can do things about others of course we cannot a sign and symptom of coronary artery disease is what we call angina or chest pain angina the treatment for sorry CAD is um, 
decrease risk factors, proper diet, so decrease sodium, cholesterol, and sugar, they're saying. Monitor by a doctor, meds, and surgery, what we call bypass surgery or a cabbage. Coronary artery bypass gavage is what it is. And you may have heard of triple bypass surgery, quadruple bypass surgery. And what they're doing is they basically make a little road around the blockage. There's a dam in the um, artery or a dam build up in the, the artery. They'll keep that open as much as they can. They'll give you medication that will make your blood best or your blood cells get be able to be flexible and move through those blockages. But they may build basically like a um, bypass. It's what it is around it. They'll take a artery from your coronary or from your femoral artery. They basically open you up and do bypass surgery if need be, depending on the severity of the disease process. Angina pectoris is really the sign that we have. Hopefully you get angina pectoris when you get um, blocked arteries. And really what that is, is pain. Pectoris is chest and angina is pain. And it's a result of coronary artery disease. And it's a decrease of oxygen right to that heart muscle. Our heart really only has three vein, three arteries that two main arteries and th that one divides into two that feed the heart its oxygen. So really what happens is, is those they're called coronary arteries, those ones feeding the heart. That's all they do is give oxygen and nutrients to the heart. They get clogged up with cholesterol, eating too much rotten ronnies and fried food, deep fried food. Um, you can end up with this cholesterol stuck in your arteries and when our heart doesn't get en enough oxygen it basically is screaming it's just like any other muscles that were working but it's not getting enough oxygen and it's screaming so we end up with chest pain so it could be severe chest pain but it could be heaviness and tightness feeling of basically heartburn it's often on one side of the body it may go down the jaw the neck the shoulders the arms and it usually lasts 2 to 15 minutes in um, duration it can be mistaken for indigestion they'll become short of breath nausea sweating dizzy palpitations and for treatment you rest when the episode begins, you rest and it decreases the heart um, muscle from working and you think that you're just out of shape and too much um, fat or whatever it may be, but or too fat, whatever you may think. But um, there are very thin people who can have heart attacks. My father was one of them actually, very thin, unlike me, had no adipose tissue whatsoever, was on a low um, cholesterol diet, but did have a heart attack. So these things that we um, need to avoid, things that trigger our angina, if we have angina. Meds, often this is where you're going to see nitroglycerin. When we talk about nitroglycerin later on in our medication um, module, you're going to see that it comes in spray, ointment, pills, patches. And the person should always have their spray and their patch with them at all times. They do not take more than three tablets. So they'll take one tablet when their angina starts. And if it is not relieved in five minutes, you take another tablet. If that is still does not relieve it, you can take a third tablet. Um, and usually um, that will stop it. But if not, you need to call 911. So make sure that you have, and if you do have triggers that give you angina, you can take your angina or your nitroglycerin prior to that activity. Patches are usually applied in the AM and removed at HS, but I have seen it the other way. And we've already talked about the cabbage or coronary artery bypass gavage, which is the defective part of the eye artery is bypassed. And then we have proper diet, of course, a low cholesterol diet. And if your angina gets so bad and the, actually our coronary arteries get so bad clogged up it will actually stop the flow of blood completely to the heart muscle and we end up with myocardial infarction
And my infarction is death of, myo is muscle, cardio of course is heart. So it is a heart attack. It may be called a coronary. It may also be called a coronary occlusion. Um, so you may hear any of those words and really it is blood flow is cut off to the heart and there's no oxygen to that tissue and it dies. And unfortunately, it's just like a fish bellied up dead. That tissue does not come back. When we're looking at signs and symptoms, they are on page 865, sudden, severe. And when we're looking at angina or we're looking at heart things, it has chest pain, doesn't have anything to do with our brain. That has to do with a stroke. So sudden, severe, left-sided chest pain, stabbing, crushing, burning, radiating, outlives angina pain. You've taken your um, pills and it's not working. Shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, cold, clammy, weak pulse, they'll have a decreased blood pressure, decreased um, respirations, and this is not relieved by nitroglycerin tablets or spray or antacids. Treatment, this is an emergency. Um, some people deny they're having heart attacks. They will have an ECG or an EKG, depends where you are, Canada or the US. So really it's the same thing, electrocardiogram and blood tests. They'll have meds to relieve the heart pain. They'll be looking at the heart rhythm, anticoagulants to stop any clots. They will be in CCU. You'll see that is coronary care unit for two to three days. They gradually increase their activities. They have stress tests. You have to be careful as your role of a PSW to prevent other complications such as pneumonia and thrombus. And you'll know what a thrombus is. It's a blood clot. Hopefully you've looked that one up. Rehabilitation while in the hospital and at home will include diet, exercise, meds, lifestyle, sexual activities regained when your physician tells you you can and working. Um, meds, they need to remember to take them. They cost a fortune. So if I don't have good financial or good um, medical, then I'm in big trouble. So you will see that social, there's a financial burden. Um, you may hear your, might be your psychological, your fear of having another one that could be fatal. You may hear about an angiogram. Angio is veins and gram, of course, is picture. Angioplasty, angio is, of course, arteries and plasty is opening that up or bypass gavage surgery. When they do an angioplasty, what they do is they go in your femoral artery of your leg and they take and they put a, a basically a tube in your heart and they put in a stent. And what a stent is, is like a mesh um, to flatten down the, the um, cholesterol in your arteries and the blood then go through. So I think I'm